Shalom, brothers and sisters. Blessed day to all of you. I want to welcome all of you to Gospel to All Creation broadcast. And I praise God for another opportunity God has given to me to encourage all of you and to bring the Word of God to you. Amen. All right. So, brothers and sisters, I have started a new series. The title of my new series is Armor of God. And, uh, and uh, I believe that in this season... Uh, in this difficult time, you have heard about armor of God, and many people have been uh, might be talking about this, or maybe in your Christian walk, you have heard about the armor of God many times. Okay, so don't take it easy. Don't think that uh, this is another sermon. This is another topic about armor of God. I already heard many times, but I believe that you will learn something new today. Or Throughout this series, there's something new that you will be able to learn and some revelation that I'm going to share with you. Uh, I believe it will bless you and it will help you and strengthen you. Amen. Okay, so I have started by laying some uh, important foundation yesterday. I have mentioned a few things yesterday. Very important thing because without those foundation, uh, we, you may not get the entire picture. So if you miss the first part, the part one of this series, please go back to my YouTube channel and you can watch the part one so that you can understand. Uh, before I go into the sixth armor of God, all right? The helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, and then the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of peace, and the sword of the spirit. Okay? Before I mention about all this thing, there's something important that I want to mention to you today so that you can know the truth and you can face your war. You see why I say war? See, armor of God. Why people, the soldiers wear the full armor? If you see the movies in olden days, all right? All those war movies, you see that the soldiers will wear the full armor of God. For what? They are going for war. That means there is a war. There is a spiritual war that we are facing or we might be facing. That's the reason God said you wear the full armor of God. Protect yourself so that, you know, you can, you can, you can come out from all this thing without get stuck in a rut or stuck in your issues or something like that. Okay, so in one way or another, all of us are in a war. Okay, now we are facing a coronavirus war. Okay, it's like a war zone. We cannot go out. We cannot do our daily routine as, uh, as how we used to do. All right. So let me explain to you something important before I start to share with you about the full armor of God. Okay, all those, all the armor. All right. See, Paul mentioned starting this entire uh, armor of God by saying this word stand. Paul stay, stand. Four times for Paul stay, stand. Okay. There must be something that Paul is saying about this. You see, Paul mentioned about standing more than each one of the armor of God. Each one of the armor of God he mentioned one time in this uh, in, from chapter 6, verse 10, all the way to verse 20. Paul mentioned the battle, the, the belt of truth, he mentioned one time. Okay, the helmet of salvation he mentioned one time. All the other uh, armors of God he mentioned only one time, one time, one time. But about standing on the ground firmly, he mentioned at least four times. Okay, um, let me read to you from verse 11. Okay, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's shame. That is one time stand. And then verse 12, he said, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authority, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of, uh, of evil in the heavenly realms. Verse 13, Therefore put on full armor of God, so that when the day of evil come, you may able to stand. This is another time Paul mentioned. Okay, stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, this is the third time Paul mentioned. Then verse 14, before Paul mentioned about uh, belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness, Paul said in verse 14, stand firm then. Wow. So brothers and sisters, four times, 
Paul mentioned the word stand, 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 and stand firm. Then only Paul began to describe about all the full armor of God. Wow, I like this. You know, there is a revelation about this, you know. Stand where God wants us to stand. Where, what Paul is saying when he said, hey, stand, stand your ground, stand your ground, stand your ground, stand your ground. Stand firm. Be still. Stand firm. Then only he mentioned all about the armor of God. Amen. See, brothers and sisters, the way that we, we fight our, our, the war or the battle that we are facing, the way that we fight is not by getting panicked. It is not by running here and there. It is not by doing this and that. But it is all about just be still or stand firm. That is what Paul is saying to all of us. Amen. You see, the world will say, if you want to go for your, uh, you want to go for the war, you must have strategies, you must have this, you must have equipment, you must this and that, everything you must have. Then only you can win the battle. But let me explain to you, God ways, God's way of doing things are totally different than the way of this world. Okay, the wisdom of God is uh, beyond, uh, is greater than the wisdom of this world or wisdom of any man. The way God do things at times, it doesn't make sense to us. It doesn't make sense. It is like um, it is like illogic at times when God asks us to do something. He said, "No, God is saying you want to go for your war, you stand, stand firm, stand still. Okay, don't be panic, don't run here and there." He said, "So many times when people face battles or they face some challenging time in their life, you know what they will be doing? They will be running around the entire world." Okay, what I mean is they will be running around looking for this solution, that solution. They will be looking for uh, this person to another person, try to solve the issue, try to get some help. They will be running around until they get exhausted and they have wasted their time. They have wasted other people's time. Then only they will come before God. That's how people face issue. That's how people do, do things. But God says, stand. Stand. <laughs> I, I just love this. I just like this to know what God is saying in this, in, this, uh, in this armor of God. Before God say, before you put your entire armor of God, learn to stand. Where to stand? Stand on the victory ground. And God is saying, stand still. Stand firm. You see, you and I, the way we start our... Uh, fight our battle or fight the war uh, not by running here and there by standing on the victory ground I said victory ground okay why I say victory ground brothers and sisters you must remember the Lord Jesus already won the battle okay the victory is already belongs to Jesus and in Jesus and through our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord Jesus already give you the victory for every battle that you are facing or every battle that you're going to face in future. The victory already given to you. Amen. You see, when you facing a battle or when you are praying, when you are on your knees for some battles that you are going through, please do not pray for victory, but pray from a position of a victor. Amen. It is a, there is a world of a different Praying from the position as a victor or praying for victory is two different things. Why I say you pray from the position of a victor? Because the Lord Jesus already gave victory to us. He already overcome everything. We are in Him and He is in us. And the same power that raised Jesus from death, He lives in us. The same Holy Spirit who raised the Lord Jesus from death is living in the inside of us. We have the same power. 
Amen. So you have the victory. You are not looking for victory. You are not praying for victory, but you should pray as a victor from victory. Amen. Then stand. Paul says, stand, stand on the ground, on the victory ground. Why I say victory ground? Brothers and sisters, listen carefully. The Bible says, amen. Everything that the Lord Jesus have done for us on the cross it is a divine exchange for us. All the things that God, Jesus, have paid for us is a divine exchange for us. Amen. Jesus' body was broken so that you and I can be healed and made whole again. And His blood was shed on the cross so that all our sin can be forgiven, can wash away. His blood wash away all our sin. Amen. Then Jesus, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus became poor so that through his poverty you might become rich. I mean in every area that you can have abundance life. Jesus said, I give, I came to give you abundant life. He said, everything that the Lord Jesus have done on the cross, it's a divine exchange for you. My point is this. Jesus' bad body, when he carried the heavy cross from the courtyard of Pilate, you know, the place where Pilate uh, have surrendered Jesus to the Roman soldier. And they, Jesus had to carry his, call, his cross all the way to Golgotha, where they crucify him. While he was on the way, Jesus carried a very heavy cross. And at, at a few times, Jesus fell on that ground, on that on that. On that ground, Jesus fell. His, his body fell on that ground. Amen. His body fell on the ground. And there's another person by the name of Simon who came and helped Jesus to carry the cross until Golgotha. See, my point is this. Jesus' body fell on that ground. When he fell on the ground, so that, you see, as I said, that there is a divine exchange that took place for us. Everything that the Lord Jesus have done for us, there is a divine exchange for us. His body fell on that ground so that you and I can stand on that victory ground. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus brought a great victory for all of us because his own body fell on that ground so that brothers and sisters, you and I can stand the ground now as a victor. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible also say about standing so many times. There are many times, many important occasion. The Bible talks about standing. Okay. You see, when, uh, when the children of, children of Israel, when they left Egypt, okay? When they left Egypt, they was on the way to the promised land. They came to a dead end. In front of them, there is a Red Sea. At the back of them, Pharaoh's army coming after them. They, they have no way out. And God, through Moses, spoke to them in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. And 14, he says that, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Stand firm. Moses said, Stand firm. Amen. So, as we learn about this uh, full armor of God, before you learn to put every, uh, every part of the armor, before you learn, you must learn to stand your ground. You must learn not to be panicked. You must learn to be still and know that He is God. Psalms 46 verse 10. God says, Be still and know that I am God. You see, when, this, uh, when Psalm is wrote about that Psalm, the people going through such a chaotic time, they were, uh, they were natural disaster, they were earthquake, and they were also war. During that time, the psalmist told, God spoke to the people. He said, be still and know that I am God. God again come to them. He said, this is how you fight your battle. Stand firm. Don't be panicked. Don't run here and there. Trust in me. Rely on me and I will bring you through. When Moses told the, the children of 
Israel. He say, don't panic, don't worry, just be still and see the deliverance the, the Lord will bring to you today. And true enough, just after that, a few minutes later, after, after Moses said that, the Red Sea was departed. And the children of Israel, almost three million of them, they cross on that dry ground to the other side. Amen. So brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you today. The way that we start, we fight our battle, it is not by getting panic. It is not by looking here and there, but it's all about stand firm. And stand on that victory ground. Look to Jesus. Jesus' body fell on that ground. And the ground became a victory ground for you and I as a children of God, as a child of God. Because everything the Lord Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary is for us. It's a divine exchange for us. So brothers and sisters, learn to stand your victory ground. Learn to stand as a victor. You are not a victim, but you are a victor in Christ Jesus. So be encouraged today before you go to the armor of God. Brothers and sisters, learn to stand on that victory ground that Jesus already given to us through His finished work on the cross of Calvary. Amen. So... So brothers and sisters, you take care and uh, I will come back to you with another series. And I believe that uh, you will be blessed today. And uh, I believe that you will be blessed in the days to come as I share with you more revelation about the full armor of God. Amen. So you take care. Have a blessed day. Bye bye.